You want a pond in your backyard, but can't be bothered with the cost and maintenance of pumps, filters, and chemicals? Do you want a really easy maintenance pond? Then I have really good news for you. They're actually really easy to build, and they're called natural ponds. I built this pond over 10 years ago. The water is clean, there's no algae in it, and I do almost nothing to maintain it. Once a year I add some water because we don't get enough rain here. But other than that, there's no maintenance. I have no pump, no filter, and I never use chemicals. The pond is full of frogs, dragonflies, and all kinds of insects. Birds come to drink every day. And nature takes care of my pond for me. In this video, I'm going to give you some secrets for building this type of pond and I'm going to tell you how I built my own pond. But before I do that, let me tell you my story. I wanted to add another pond to my property and this one was going to be quite a distance from the house. It's in a place that has no electricity, so adding a pump was really not an option. Well, I looked around nature and seen that there's ponds all over the place. They're just holes in the ground, they fill with water, and somehow nature takes care of them. I have a chemistry and biology background and I understand what takes place in a pond and I couldn't see any reason why this kind of pond wouldn't work on my property. So I went online and looked in books but every place I went said that this type of pond just wouldn't work. But nobody gave me a reason why. So I figured well I'll just prove them all wrong and I went ahead and built the pond. Now my pond does have a plastic liner and apparently once you put in a liner it just can't be natural. My pond has now been in place for 10 years and it works just great. I'm now convinced that you can build a natural pond yourself. And I'm not alone. Over that 10 year period a lot of other people have also tried building natural ponds. And we've now gotten together on Facebook and we have a group called Building Natural Ponds. So what is the biggest problem with ponds? It's algae. Algae grows anywhere where you have water and we just don't like algae in our ponds. There's nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly healthy, but we don't like the look of it. So we want to get it out of our pond. Algae is a plant and it grows wherever nutrients are present and where it can get enough sunlight. A lot of the equipment that's used in a traditional pond is there to get rid of the algae. The pump will move the water through a filter system and that helps pull out some of the algae. It also goes through a UV light and the UV light kills algae. The filter helps reduce nutrients so the algae can't grow as well. So a lot of that equipment is there to control the algae levels in the pond. So if we take all that equipment away, you'd think that the algae would grow really well. And I can't blame you for being skeptical. I mean, imagine that. You can take away all this equipment and it still works just as well without it. How can that possibly be? Well, it's important to understand how algae really grows. Now, here's a diagram that shows you how nitrogen moves through the water. Fish and insects and frogs, they all poop in the water and that adds nutrients. Organic matter like leaves and dead plants, they also add nutrients to the water as they decompose. Bacteria in the water then convert the nitrogen from one form to another. Now you can kind of ignore the uh, chemical terms there. Those are just different forms of nitrogen. But once that nitrogen is a form of nitrate, plants use it to grow. Both regular plants and algae, they both use the nitrate. The secret to having an algae-free pond is the fact that algae needs higher levels of nutrients than plants. If you have lots of plants in the pond, they will use up the nutrients before the algae can get them. So the plants grow and the algae stops growing. So the secret to a natural pond is to have lots of plants. Another thing you can do to that pond is reduce the amount of sunlight that reaches the water. Algae really likes lots of sun. And if we add plants that grow on top of the water, like water lilies, they reduce the amount of light that gets to the water. This again reduces the amount of algae growth. The real secret to creating a natural pond is that you have to grow lots of plants, but you have to have a place for them to grow. In a traditional pond, the sides of the pond are usually vertical. 
and there's very little place to grow plants. In a natural pond design, you have to build in planting shelves. With those in place, you have lots of places to put your plants. The plants use up all the nutrients and algae doesn't grow. It's really that simple. I've given you a few pointers about building natural ponds and explained to you why they work. I hope that convinced you that they actually do work. But there's more to building natural ponds than I can discuss in this short video. So I've written a book called Building Natural Ponds. In it I discuss the whole process. I have a chapter on designing the pond. I mean it's one thing to make the pond work, it's another to make it look natural. And that's what a lot of people want these days. There's also chapters on how to build the pond, what kind of liner to pick, how to build the planting shelves, and all kinds of other little secrets about constructing the actual pond. It's not that difficult. It does take some work and it takes some time. There's also chapters on fish and plants. Which ones are good for ponds? How do you select them? How do you plant? Even something simple as how do you put the plant into the water is important in a natural pond. You don't want to add soil, and almost all books on pond plants will tell you to plant them into pots that have soil in it. Well, that's not a good idea in a natural pond. That soil adds nutrients to the pond water, and we want to keep nutrients low. The book also discusses maintenance of the pond, and it explains how to build large ponds and small ponds, and how do you build a pond on a sloped piece of property? Do you need a liner? In the book I examine different ways to build ponds that don't require liner. It then has a chapter at the end that also discusses things like rain gardens and bog garden. How do you add them to the pond to enhance your natural pond? I hope I've convinced you that natural ponds really do work and that they're not all that difficult to put in. I hope now that you really want to add one to your garden. They're a great place to watch nature, watch the dragonflies and frogs and insects and toads and little birds all enjoying themselves in your backyard. And it's a great place to grow a different kind of plant. If you're interested in finding out more about natural ponds, please click the link below and it'll take you to a special page that'll give you all kinds of information about my book, Building Natural Ponds.